Hey guys, James Reeves with TFB TV at the beautiful Nola Tech Range here in New Orleans, Louisiana. Today we are doing a review of the Smith & Wesson M&P 2.0 5-inch model. This is the version that was submitted to MHS. That is to say that this is Smith & Wesson's entry to become the next sidearm of the United States military. As you all know, this little fella here didn't win the SIG P320 did, but this is a pretty dang good gun in its own right. I'm going to do a review of it for you today on TFB TV. And by the way, some of you may have noticed this is a TFB TV throwback slim fit v-neck we're selling them in regular fit and crew neck or slim fit v-neck if you're so inclined uh, down there right below the video our teespring shop is right there so support us buy a t-shirt if you're interested all right so with all that out of the way let's start talking about the specs and hit the range the smith and wesson m 2.0 5 inch model is of course part of the venerable smith and wesson m p line of handguns the M&P series is basically Smith & Wesson's answer to Glock or the SIG P320. They are polymer-framed, striker-fired handguns geared towards defense and tactical use. The M2 5-inch model, as I'm reviewing in this video, was S&W's competitor for the military's MHS, or Modular Handgun System, competition to determine the next sidearm for our armed forces. The SIG P320 ultimately won that competition, but the M2 is certainly no loser. The M&P line has been hugely successful and proven itself to be a reliable performer since its introduction in 2005. The M2 has the same upgrades as the recent 2.0 versions of the M&P guns, which include an excellent skateboard-like texture on the grip, small forward slide serrations, and an improved trigger with a roughly 6-pound pull and a very short audible and tactile reset. The M&P 2.0 trigger is better than average out of the box among its class. The M2 also has features that set it apart from the standard M&P models. The M2 has an extended steel chassis inside of the polymer frame. This keeps the weight down but increases rigidity and durability of the polymer frame. Second, it has the same Armonite coating as the other M&Ps. Armonite is a nitride treatment that is virtually rust-proof. However, the M2 has a flat dark earth finish that's quite handsome. The M2 also comes standard with a 1911 style ambidextrous safety lever that's very easy to engage and disengage. And that isn't all the M2 borrows from the 1911. The M2 has an 18 degree grip angle, the same as the storied 1911 handgun. Finally, and of course, it comes with a 5-inch barrel, which will give you better ballistic performance than the typical 4-inch barrel found on most standard compact handguns. Pulling some numbers from BBTI, that's Ballistics by the Inch, a very helpful webpage, the M2 on average should pull about 50 to 100 feet per second of additional velocity from the 5-inch barrel over a 4-inch barrel, which translates to a roughly 5 to 10 percent increase in energy depending on the round. There's also the additional benefit of the longer sight radius, which gives the gun a slight edge in making a more precise sight alignment. The grip accepts four interchangeable inserts for fit and trigger reach, small, medium, medium large, and large. The gun has a loaded chamber indicator on top of the slide. In 9mm, it has a capacity of 17 rounds in the magazine plus one in the chamber, an overall length of 8.3 inches, and it weighs 26.9 ounces, which is about a pound less than a 5-inch barrel 1911. Street price on these guns is less than $450, which is pretty impressive for a decked out tactical pistol that could have been the next firearm of the U.S. military. So, very shootable gun. I mean, very light recoiling. You've got a little bit of heft to it, but it's not, I wouldn't consider it to be a, a heavy gun. The grip's great, love the way the grip feels. Smith & Wesson really smashed it out of the park with the grips on the M&P 2.0. Makes it very easy to shoot, very uh, easy to keep that front sight level, which translates into good accuracy. Again, the trigger is better than most striker fired guns in its class, pretty short reset. So that makes your follow-up shots pretty quick. From this side of the gun, these are just three dot sights. It's nice to have the anti-snag, the Novak style anti-snag sights that the M&Ps have on them. But from this side, you're just looking at regular three dot sights. So nothing spectacular, but not bad either. The safety 
Ambi safety, very easy to engage and disengage. I'm not a big fan of manual safeties on especially striker fired guns. This one works pretty well. This is one that I could live with if I had to. Slide release is also ambidextrous, which is a nice touch if you're a lefty. I don't really see a benefit of having one on the right hand side if you're a righty. Um, it works just fine on the left hand side. It's similar to the Glock in that you're not talking about a big tab. Compare that to say like the Beretta 92, which very easy to find, very easy to disengage. The M&P and the Glock are similar and you're talking about like a little tab of metal that's really close to the frame. All right, so that's weird. Failure to feed on the, but that's only the second magazine. So who knows, maybe it's break in. All right, let's see how this thing runs with Ventura Munition hollow points. Runs just fine. Again, totally easy to shoot. Magazine release, pretty small on this, and I've mentioned this before with the M&Ps. It's got a small magazine release, but it works just fine. Really easy to use. Again, the controls on the M&P have been outstanding so far. This gun's really easy to shoot, and it's one of the cheaper guns out there. If I hadn't sold my soul to Glock about 15 years ago, I could conceivably see myself using the M&P. I like the, what I call serrated serrations. They're these wavy slide serrations at the rear of the gun, and they added with 2.0 some minor slide serrations up front. I really don't see the point, but everybody wants forward slide serrations this day and age, so screw it, why not, I guess. Everyone, in conclusion, this was a joy to shoot. I think that this is one of the better deals if you're looking at the former MHS guns in terms of price to performance. It's a very inexpensive firearm, yet it performs very well. I love, I've already talked about how much I love the 2.0 grip texture on the polymer frame. It's got one of the better striker fired triggers out of its competition. Maybe not the best one, but certainly in the top 25% very short reset. It's much improved over the Smith & Wesson, we'll call it the M&P 1.0. It's got ambi controls. You have an ambidextrous slide release and you've got an ambidextrous paddle thumb safety that's very easy to deploy. So if you guys wanna carry this thing cocked and locked, so to speak, even though uh, this is a striker fired gun, you can do that. But the safety is very easy to deploy if you're familiar with the 1911s. I love the sights. I've always loved Smith & Wesson's M&P sights. They've got that Novak style, like very low profile, low snag ability. You've also got a five inch barrel, so you're gonna have great performance. This gun was really easy to shoot. It absolutely absolutely sops up recoil. Shooting nine millimeter out of this is a breeze. So if you are looking for one of the MHS guns, you want a gun that you can shoot well, a full size service pistol, I encourage you to give a hard look at the Smith & Wesson M&P9. I was very impressed with it. And the paint scheme's just totally rad, huh? Oh, and real quick, I'm giving this gun away to one of you guys right now. If you go to tfbtv.gun.team, you can go and see the details on our gun giveaway, but the long and short of it is, if you are a five or a $10 Patreon supporter, you are automatically entered to win a free gun every month. We're about to hit 1,000 patrons. Once we get to 1,000 patrons, we're going to be giving away two guns a month, and we're also going to give away a Galil Ace in 223 to celebrate the occasion. But you're automatically entered, Every single month, if you are a five or a ten dollar Patreon at patreon.com slash TFBTV. The winner is I don't know yet. I haven't drawn it. Oh, and by the way, this is not, of course, sanctioned by Patreon or YouTube. This is totally unofficial. Have to say that in every video where we talk about a gun giveaway. Guys, thanks a ton as usual for watching. Thank you to our sponsor, the Term Munitions, best ammo store in the entire world. Thank you to Blue Alpha Gear. Kurt, Blue Alpha Gear, I appreciate your support. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you next week.